Here's how to generate an extra 200 to $250,000 in less than five years as you're investing into short-term rentals. Look, we all probably have heard of the term creative financing. And no, I'm not talking about Pace Morby, you know, buying $3.7 million Montana, you know, ranches for, you know, no money down. There's very few people that can do that like Pace. And if you're a newbie, you're probably not gonna be successful in doing that. For those of you that are just usually doing Fannie and Freddie traditional mortgages, maybe a commercial loan here or there or a DSCR product, there's some really simple ways. If you wanna execute my 550-250 plan, which is what everybody is trying to do right now, it's gotten more challenging in 2024 than it was during the gold rush, there's no question. But there's really four levers that we want to pull to do this. And I've covered this in a previous video, links right down below. You can go look at those four pillars doing investing in the 550-250 plan. But one of the things is really kind of using an element of creative financing. And this is not gonna be complicated. I'm gonna break this down for you Alabama style, just really super simple, right? So I'm gonna walk you through an example of a property that I recently purchased. It was six, it was listed for $670,000. It was a four bedroom in the listing. It actually turned out to be a five bedroom. So that's value add. I was able to identify that in the walkthrough. Uh, so that created about $22,000 in equity for me and about another 18,000 in rental income. So I'm always looking for a hole like that, right? When I'm going through and I'm doing the underwriting process, when I'm looking to make offers, but that's not necessarily how we're gonna make an extra 200 to $250,000 in cash as we go through the 550-250 plan. Now, if you're not familiar with the 550-250 property stacking plan, this is how I have built my portfolio with one investment. One, I invested $126,000 when I started, but one of the keys is, is that I have used a seller credit at closing as my creative financing on almost every one of those properties. Think about this, you're gonna go through five properties in the five-year plan, over five years, that's just one property a year. Most of you that are making less than probably four or $500,000 a year are not gonna have the cash to continue to scale every single year. This is how we create cash for that. Just there's two really important levers that you wanna pull here. Number one is gonna be how you make the offer and get that seller credit. So this property in Banner Oak, North Carolina was listed for 670. I went in, I offered 670, full price, asked for a $20,000 credit at closing. And it, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you gotta put that towards your interest rate or whatever. I didn't do that. I almost never do. I wanna keep the cash because the cash is the one thing that most of us that's holding us back, we're cash poor, right? So $670,000 full price offer, buyer's happy. You know, I get a better comp when I close. The cost over a 20 year AM or a 30 year AM on a monthly basis for 20K is like negligible. It's like 115 to $135, depending on your interest rate. So I would rather have that cash. Over five years, if you buy five properties and you're able to average $20,000 seller credit at closing, that's $100,000. For many of you, that's another 20% down, $500,000 property. Or in my case, when I bought Banner Oak, I did a 10% down uh, you know, second home loan. So that $100,000 could be one and a half down payments for you. That's something that's super important that a lot of people aren't thinking about. Every single deal, I'm trying to get a seller credit. I've done 71 purchases since 2018, 67 of them had a seller credit. The average has been $27,000. Tyler Kuhn, actually, who was my agent on this deal, got me the biggest one. I think it was $71,000, $72,000 on my big Banner Elk property about three years ago. But I've averaged $27,000, right? So I'm not real smart. So I'm gonna grab my handy dandy calculator. $27,000 times 67 is 1.8 million dollars. You want to know how I've grown a $19 million portfolio? It's because I've generated an additional $1.8 million over the last six years, really almost six and a half years now, uh, in my investing career. I didn't have that cash. I wasn't, I'm not a rich hedge fund guy that I can just buy whatever I want. I had to grow out of my cash flow. So I literally have one investment, one investment, one check that I had to write into my own short-term rental portfolio. And this was a big component of that. So if you can generate another $100,000 in cash in those five properties, and we're not talking 27,000, we're only talking 20 as a seller credit. So the strategy is, is just like I did in, in my last banner out purchase, you go in and you offer full price. Instead of trying to negotiate down 20, 30, 40, $50,000 on a $600,000 property, just offer them full price 
take the credit, you stroke their ego, it's much easier for them to say, oh yeah, hey, I only paid 500, we'll do that, I'll give them the $20,000 credit, 25. And ask for a little bit more. I started at 30 and we ended up on 20 on this one because they're gonna come back and they're gonna negotiate just like anything else. You need a strong agent like Tyler Kuhn at Savvy Realty in North Carolina to be able to help you with this. I'm actively looking for a major compound right now in the Nashville area and I'm using a Savvy agent here as well who is I just met him for the first time yesterday, Kirkland. He's awesome. And he's finding me this mega compound that'll sleep 20 people. I can expand on it and I can host boot camps and all my type of stuff there. So that seller credit is something that you need to have a really good agent. You need to have an agent has a relationship with the title company or the closing attorney so you can get that underwritten and build, you know, $100,000, $125,000 in cash in that first five years of the 550-250 plan. That's how we get to $250,000 in net income. So you can apply that to your ARV budget, you know, your renovation budget, your design, or you can put that back into your investing account. For me, I put that money back into my investing account for the very next property. The next component here is gonna be something that really most people don't talk about, and this is debt pay down. There is a big difference Specifically, if you're only owning short-term rentals for three to five years. So in that 550-250 plan, you are going to reposition most likely at least one property to be able to get to that $250,000. I had a call with a gentleman this morning. He's in my inner circle and we're, he's selling a property because he has $240,000 to $260,000, $250,000 in equity inside of it. And it's only generating about $17,000, $18,000 a year in cash flow. We did a super quick return on equity audit. Like, hey, let's take that 250, let's sell the property, access that $250,000, let's reposition that money and break that out into two investments. He can buy two Banner Elks with that and still have $50,000, $60,000 in redesign budget on top of that. Well, I'm in a net between 65 to probably 70,000 out of that property. So imagine he's going from 17, $18,000 in cash flow, he repositions. Now he's going to be doing 60, 50, probably conservatively for him, 50 to 60 times two. So 18 grand a year or 115 to $120,000 a year. So he could have had even more equity. He's on a traditional 30 year uh, note with that if he had had a 20 year commercial loan. So if you look at over a five year period, uh, 20 year commercial loan versus a 30 year commercial loan, you're typically going to get about 11% more debt pay down on that 20% loan. That's why literally about the first 20, 25 properties that I invested into the SDR space starting in 2015, I always did commercial loans because of that debt pay down. Because in my life plan, I know how long I'm gonna hold these properties. Typically I go in and I do like three, between two to four properties in a market. And I'll go do some financially driven components. I only invest in the markets that me and my wife want to spend time in. Then I'll buy the lifestyle asset. And those other pot, the other three or four properties in that pod will fund the lifestyle asset. If it doesn't cash flow. Typically it does and it's pretty strong. So I want to pay down the, those other properties. I'm probably not going to hold for 10, 15, 20 years. I'm going to continue to level up. And by leveling up, all I'm doing is just duplicating the 550, 250 plan. I need to get to a reposition. So that way I can get equity and go from that $400,000 property to the $700,000 property. Then a couple of years down the road, because I'm accelerating my debt pay down by using the 20 year AMS, and here's another tip, I'm making two payments every month. So I'm paying down interest faster and paying more to principal. So I'm paying every two weeks as opposed to roughly every 30 days, which accelerates that pay down by like five to seven years, depending on the amortization schedule. So over a five year period with four properties inside of that five year period, on the 20 year AMs, I literally can have like 50 to 60% more debt pay down because I'm taking like that average of 10 to 11% over those four properties, it's gonna be 40%. I'm getting that $20,000 with every property on the seller credit, and that's another 100,000 bucks. That's how you generate 200 to $250,000 in additional cash in less than five years. That's how you're gonna accelerate your your portfolio growth plan, and that's one of the keys to executing the 550-250 plan flawlessly. Now, if you wanna know more about that 550-250 plan, I've got a free masterclass right here. Just click that link down below. Once you're done with that, hit the subscribe button because there's a lot more like this coming down the pipeline. Happy hosting, everybody.